All right, guys, we all want more motivation, more sex drive. All of these things are beneficial. Now, if you find that that's lacking, there may be a chance that your SHBG may be too high. That sex hormone binding globulin, for example, it can bind to estrogen or testosterone. It has a higher binding ability to testosterone, but it can still bind both. And if you're experiencing some of these symptoms, there are ways to naturally lower it. I'm going to talk about 19 of those. So again, we're talking, if you find yourself with a lack of energy, lack of motivation, you want to improve sex drive, you want to improve muscle mass, decrease body fat, sleep better. These are things that lowering SHBG can potentially do. Now let's talk about something you have to take into account. Your lab values are one thing, but you do want to take into account the actual symptoms that come along with it. Because if, if you don't have these symptoms and your SHBG may be on the higher end, may not be a terrible thing. There is some evidence that there's potential benefit to being on that higher end. But if you are on the higher end experiencing symptoms, something you want to keep uh, in mind. Now, keep in mind, SHBG is just a tiny part of a very big hormonal picture. So this is, this is just a tiny part of, of what we're talking about from hormone standpoint. As always, you're way better off going after lifestyle things than you are supplements. Now, I cover both in the video, but always lean towards lifestyle stuff. I'm also going to look at some overlooked factors. I don't think people look into enough. So let's just hop right into it. This is in no particular order, although right off the bat, I, I do want to tackle a big one. Okay. High iron. Now, most people have heard of this. They've been like, oh, I can go give blood and I can lower my iron. And that is true. You can do that and it can help. But the other thing you need to keep an eye on is, are you able to recycle iron? What I mean by that is, for example, if you have enough bioavailable copper, that is going to help your body be able to recycle or lower high iron levels. So it's not just about getting rid of iron. Your body can help you do that on its own without going in to get blood. Not that giving blood can not potentially be helpful, but there's kind of a two-pronged approach there. Supplementing with magnesium has been shown to lower SHBG. Again, your mileage on these is going to vary. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm just throwing some options out there for you. I would go with magnesium glycinate, probably my preferred choice, but any magnesium will likely do outside of magnesium oxide. I would stay away from that. Not a good choice. Adequate protein. Now, what do I mean by ad adequate protein? Okay, I would say 0.62 to 0.8 grams per pound of ideal body weight. You don't have to go higher than that. There's downsides to going higher than that. There's downsides to going lower. That's kind of a sweet spot for protein intake. Get your cholesterol checked. We tend to see people with cholesterol issues that can have at high SHBG levels. So that's something you want to keep in mind. Eating fattier meat can also be beneficial. Some of the people that have come to me with their hormones out of whack are, are kind of on the extreme diet. You know, some of them are vegan in this particular case. Consume grass-fed beef liver. I've said this before, I'll say it again, it's mother nature's multivitamin. Everybody should be consuming it. If you can't just get a desiccated liver uh, supplement. And again, I'll include links in the description to some of these things that I personally use. Mycotoxin, mycotoxin is basically a mold toxin. It's overlooked. This is one of those overlooked things that I feel like contributes to high SHVG and when you can address it, it may be a factor in, in what you're experiencing. You do have to get tested first and that's something you'd have to talk to your doctor about, but something to consider. Okay. Thyroid function is a huge one. Thyroid function is absolutely tied in to proper hormone function, proper hormone balance. Also definitely want to get your thyroid function measured and not just your TSH. That's really popular for doctors. Just to look at TSH, you need a full thyroid panel. Okay. Castor oil packs, this can help with liver function. I don't want to get too in depth on this. I've tried them before. I kind of thought it was one of those woo woo things. You can literally feel it when it's, when it's on there. So I think there's some evidence for them. I personally use them. I like them. So something to consider your liver function is critical to hormone function. Okay. Vitamin D levels can contribute. So if your vitamin D levels are low. SHBG can be high. I do not recommend oral vitamin D supplements. Most of them 
contains seed oils. I think you can get it from either sun exposure or like a vitamin D light. Again, link in the description. Okay. Let's talk about some more here in the next page. Under eating. If you're stressing yourself through under eating, that's, that's no bueno. Okay. You don't want to be doing that. So make sure that you're eating enough to provide enough energy for your body to do the things it needs to. Another form of stress outside a diet would be lack of sleep, emotional stress, work stress. They can all affect hormone and SHBG levels. Some people will say, take, take the supplement Tomcat Ali. I think the evidence is mixed for it. I put it on here because there is some evidence for its use, but again, I consider it mixed. You could supplement with DHEA. I don't like that. I get nervous about supplementing with other hormones, not my preferred step, but again, it's something that has shown some evidence to lower SHBG. Stinging nettle, another one that has shown some evidence. I would be more comfortable with this one, but again, supplements, like I stressed from the get-go, lifestyle over supplements. Avena oats is one that's been mentioned. Not a fan of this, but I threw it on there because there is some evidence it could potentially help. A big one for me is stopping extreme diets. I've had a number of people, men and women, come to me with hormone imbalances. They're coming from keto, they're coming from carnivore, vegan, whatever it might be, fasting, and they're starting to experience these problems. We need to navigate away from those and start just eating a balanced diet. The downside is it takes time. It is not an overnight thing, particularly if you're already experiencing hormone issues. Stop fasting. I know it's really popular to do. I did it for a long, long time. But again, it's, it's kind of no different than the low calorie thing. You're undernourishing your body. If you're metabolically healthy and you're not having issues, sure, you can fast once in a while. I don't see any issue with that. But if you're having issues, I would stop fasting. Finally, watch the alcohol intake. I'm not going to harp on anybody about this because I drink, but you need to do it in moderation. If you get carried away, chances are you're going to increase estrogen levels. You're going to get a lot of other hormones out of whack. So that is something you want to watch. So again, guys, those are some options that you have at your disposal. Some of them are more important than others. Personally, I would tick off the iron thing right from the get go. I would look at your lifestyle, your diet, your stress levels are going to play a huge role in some of these other things, I would use the supplements as a last resort. So let me know in the comments, other videos that you would like me to cover. This video was a prime example of a viewer reaching out, asking for me to kind of cover some of this hormone stuff. Again, this was a tiny aspect of it. So lots more to cover down the road. I hope it was helpful. See you in the next one.